loves me like he used to Sometimes we're not ourselves There's no one I can turn to And join us. Good morning. Welcome. Stand if you would, if you are able, and join us. Open up the heavens. We waited for this day. We gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory. Awaking in desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part.
Psalm 103, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who des satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. I hope today as we sing and praise and worship that it's something that comes not just from our mouth but from our soul. That we're praising God from the depth of who we are. All of our inmost being praising His holy name. Let's continue to proclaim and worship who God is and what He has done for us. All praise to God the Father all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome, the King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name I believe. I believe there is one salvation, one doorway that leads to life, one redemption, one confession. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in the crucifixion, by his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection, alleluia, his life is dead to me. Oh, all praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome the King who was and is and ever. Beyond what hearts imagine, ears have heard, or eyes have seen. I believe that the day is coming, he's returning to claim his bride. Light the altar, keep it burning, see the lamp and the rose of rolling light. Oh, all praise to God the Father, all praise to to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome, the King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name. 
Oh, no, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? Oh, no, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? Oh, no, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? to the Holy Spirit our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be in Jesus' mighty name I believe all praise to God our Father all praise to Christ the Son all praise to the Holy Spirit Oh, yeah. 
Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Sing that, shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my voice and let me sing, always going for my King.
sing that again here. may be seated. Let's pray together. Lord, we offer ourselves to you today. We worship you. You've told us in in Romans 12 that giving ourselves completely to you is a spiritual act of worship. And we do that in light of, in view of, your great, amazing grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you for for who you are and for what you have done. We thank you for your love for us, that while we were yet sinners, you sent your son Jesus to die for us. And so as we spend this time with you and with your people today, Lord, I just pray that you you would take what we offer... We know it's not much and we don't have a lot to offer, but we offer ourselves. We pray that you would do what only you can do in and through our lives. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness in those places where we have uh, done what is uh, uh, not pleasing to you. We ask for your, your grace and your mercy. We pray for your encouragement. We pray for your uh, your, uh, your presence and your peace. The things that uh, we have carried in here today, the burdens that we're carrying in life, Lord, we, we, we place them at your feet. We ask that you would carry those burdens. We pray, Lord, for wisdom for the church that we can carry each other's burdens. We can have the insight and discernment to know where we need to step in and how we can help each other as your spirit leads. Lord, we pray for the opportunities that we have uh, in, our, in our daily lives, in our workplace, in the school, in, in, uh, in our, uh, our homes, in the neighborhood, uh, in the community. Lord, I pray that you will help open our eyes to see the opportunities that you place before us to, to represent you well in the lives of the people around us. I pray that you'll, you'll give us eyes to see and, and ears to hear and, and, and even more than seeing and hearing, but that uh, you'll give us the love that we need to show to the people around us so that they can know what it means to, to be loved by God and that they can draw, be drawn to life with you. Lord, we thank you for this time that, uh, that you have called us together as your people. We pray that you would would move and work and have your way among us. We pray that your spirit would, would uh, guide and direct uh, the, the time that we have together. And, and Lord, we are open to whatever you want to say to us and what you want to do in us and through us. Help us to receive and to respond in the ways that uh, you desire. Lord, we give ourselves to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
If you are here today and you are a veteran, we would ask you to stand so we can acknowledge you this morning and thank you for your service. We, we can't do it justice in a service like this, but we want to acknowledge on this uh, Veterans Day weekend the, uh, the sacrifice and the, the things that you have, have done uh, for our country and for our freedom. And so we, we thank you so much. Uh, our kids are heading out to uh, Hope Squadron, Children's Church, whatever we're going to call it, right? Uh, Christmas practice, all of those things. Uh, they are... Uh, uh, having a great time learning, uh, and uh, and so as they do, we uh, we are uh, just excited about that uh, coming up uh, in as as we head toward Christmas. But before we get there, we have the uh, privilege of uh, of uh, serving Thanksgiving dinner at the uh, Cleveland Victory Church, and so uh, that sign up is out in the in the uh, the foyer. Many of you have signed up. Many of you still get to sign up because there are still some slots available for things to, uh, uh, to bring as we, as we uh, serve. We're going to be serving about 120 people throughout the course of about an hour on uh, th- the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So that's a week from Tuesday. And uh, there, are, there are some slots still available for you to sign up. Uh, each slot means that you're going to prepare enough for 20 folks. And so if we fill all those things, we'll have enough food to, uh, to distribute um, and then make sure that that uh, when as you bring that on that Tuesday that it's hot and ready to serve we'll keep it as warm as possible and we'll uh, there's ways to keep it warm uh, on the way and up there as well and uh, then if you want to go along and serve we'll be meeting here at, at three and leaving shortly thereafter on that afternoon so if if you're available we'd uh, love to have your uh, your smiling face and and your helping hands uh, helping with that as well and um, or if you want to meet us up there we'll be starting service about 4:30 at the Cleveland Victory Church of the Nazarene. So all those details are, uh, are, are around. If you have any questions, uh, uh, call or email the, the church and we will fill you in. We thank you in advance for your help. We've uh, enjoyed doing this for, uh, for many years now and we're, we're, uh, we're just excited to be able to help in, in some small way one of our sister churches on the district. Speaking of the district, we have the district uh, prayer watch coming up the week after Thanksgiving, and the uh, the little QR code there is uh, is there in your in your program, or if you want to plug that uh, into your web browser, ncodistrict.org/prayer, and you can sign up on their uh, their spreadsheet there uh, to. Pray. Uh, you're, you're signing up for an hour uh, of prayer. As the date gets closer, there's a prayer guide that will walk you through that. And we're just excited about how God has been answering prayer through this in the past, and uh, we uh, we believe Him to do that again uh, as we as we pray. So uh, please uh, make sure you sign up for uh, for the district prayer watch. And then, believe it or not, we're diving straight into the Advent season. So there are a lot of things there. Uh, there there are, and the one thing I want to uh, especially highlight today. Today is that there are devotional books uh, that are available out in the uh, in the foyer, uh, right under the TV. Um, there's a, a suggested donation of five bucks if if that's uh, something uh, you uh, you can't do. No problem at all. Just grab a book, and we're not going to be tracking. Sh- I shouldn't say this. We're not going to be tracking that necessarily. Uh, you can just put your money in the offering, or if you go on pay online, uh, there's a little uh, box to check for uh, for that uh, uh, Advent devotional books. But then you see the other uh, other dates. In things as well and just just to let you know um, one thing that's a little different this year we will be having two Christmas Eve services Christmas Eve is on Sunday um, it's on the 24th again this year and uh, the 24th is on Sunday and uh, and so we'll, we'll be having a service at our normal time 10 45 uh, in the morning as well as a 5 p.m. service both of those services will be identical they will be our Christmas Eve service uh, choose which one best fits uh, your family schedule and things so that is uh, uh, coming up, and you'll be hearing about that uh, throughout the uh, the Advent season as we get uh, head toward that. So uh, I think that's enough for now. There's a lot of stuff there in your in your program and and uh, details and all those kinds of things. But uh, uh, if you have any questions, just let us know. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, privilege to uh, to be with you today, and if you need to connect with us, if you are visiting, or if you have prayer requests, or if you drop the microphone. I, that's a drop the mic kind of moment right there, isn't it? Yeah. 
dro- pastor just dropped the mic this morning. That was, yeah, no. Uh, if you want to fill one of those out, uh, uh, that can go in the box in the back as well as uh, a great opportunity to, uh, uh, to uh, support the church through your donations. And that's one of, of many ways to be able to. To do that. Well, we are uh, gearing up for, uh, well, let's see, this week and next week will be uh, the, the final uh, week of our Essentials sermon series. And as we, uh, as we get ready for that uh, message this morning, Brian O'Connell is going to come and lead us in the uh, Apostles' Creed, assuming that the mic still works. Good morning. Oh, sounds like it's working. Life is good. <clears throat> so uh, I don't get the cheat sheet like everybody else did. It's going to be a short prayer if I have to go by memory. <laughs> it's trying. All right, well, I'll be back. In the meantime, two guys walked into a bar. No, <laughs> no they didn't because it was Sunday, so they didn't go into the bar. They drank at home. Yeah, and we just gave these guys a raise, too. Can you believe that? (laughs) He'll get it running again. Next week it'll work. I don't know who's on schedule next week. So, yeah. And if you're looking at this at home, this is normally where they insert the commercial. So, So come to Medina and Az. Something for everybody. Is this a good time to say happy birthday to Jess? Boy, if only that was up on time, we wouldn't have had to draw attention to Jess. <laughs> Look at that. You know what? Now I know why people read it from up here. <laughs> Need young eyes for that. Okay, just to give you a heads up, um, when I go through this, I pray a little differently. So it's going to be the same words, it's just a different cadence. So just kind of bear with me. So the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the second page will be... On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. Just like Gary. We talked about that Wednesday too. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Your mission, Jim, should you decide to accept it. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. Your mission. Should you choose to accept it? Your mission, should you choose to accept it? Your mission, should you choose to accept it? As always, should you or any of your IM force be caught or killed, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. As always, should you or any member of your IM force be caught or killed, the secretary will disavow all knowledge of your actions. As always, should you or any member of your team be caught or killed, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. If I let you know where I'm going, I won't be on holiday. This message, let's call it my excellent engagement gift to you, will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Ethan, and thanks again. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Ethan.
mission. Believe it or not, it's not just the stuff of action movies, although this message, I don't think, will self-destruct. It is essential that you know that God has a mission for your life, should you choose to accept it. We, we have just a couple of weeks left in this series, and it seems like uh, maybe if we've been narrowing things down to the essentials... It would have been shorter, right? Uh, maybe you're maybe you're one of the uh, people who who are thinking who were thinking that uh, maybe we could have narrowed things down a little bit more and gone even more essential. Uh, or maybe you're thinking that we've left some things out along the way. Either wherever you land or somewhere in the middle, I hope that you've learned or been reminded of uh, these things that are that are so important to living out our lives. For God, uh, that if you need to catch up or watch again or listen to again any past messages, uh, those are on the uh, the church website, and uh, uh, you can access those there. Today, I, I want to highlight the fact that we have been given a mission from Jesus Himself. After his resurrection, Jesus uh, huddled up with his disciples and he gave them some last minute instructions. And, and uh, one of the places where we read about this is at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 28, beginning in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now that is, uh, that is one of those passages that a lot of people know uh, probably, maybe, I don't know, looking across it, you've probably, not the first time you've heard it. Uh, it even has a name, the Great Commission. This, uh, this section of, of uh, verses here in Matthew has been called the Great Commission. Now, just like a lot of things that we get familiar, uh, familiar with in church and we categorize and we give religious titles to, a lot of times we end up not doing a whole lot with it. <laughs> and, and so some have called this, instead of the Great Commission, uh, it has turned into the Great Omission. And we've not necessarily fulfilled it. Usually, or the way that we describe what's being described here is, uh, is evangelism, right? Uh, when, when, I, when I say the word evangelism, uh, it might bring to mind things like street preachers or going door to door and bugging your neighbors or, or uh, leaving uh, church tracks at the table at a restaurant. I, I, we might think about memorizing a script or a routine in order to share the gospel with, with people. I heard the story of a, of a barber who was, uh, who was a Christian and he felt the urge to do more in this realm of, of sharing his faith and, and his church was offering uh, something they were calling a soul winner's class and so he attended faithfully for weeks. And he took extensive notes and he memorized the assigned Bible verses and he memorized the gospel presentation plan and he rehearsed all the material. And when he completed the class, he committed to sharing his faith in the real world, not just in class. And sure enough, then the next morning, uh, he's, he's uh, uh, there in his uh, barber shop and he prays before uh, unlocking the door, Dear Lord, help me to witness to the first man who comes through this door this morning. And just as he opens the door for, and turns around the sign to say he's open, uh, in walks in the, uh, the, the biggest, meanest, foulest man the barber had ever seen. This, it appears, it sounded like, as this man described, uh, that he had recently lost a bet with some of his, uh, his biker buddies. And uh, he was there to get his head shaved. And the barber was intimidated to share his face with faith with a guy with a neck tattoo. And uh, so he stayed quiet and didn't share his faith. The, the rest of the day didn't go any better for the barber. And as 5 p.m. approached, he was ashamed that he had not shared his gospel presentation with a single person. And so he bowed and, and prayed and asked for forgiveness. And, and then he said, Lord, if you give me one more chance, I promise I'll speak up. And at that, the door opened and the little bell rang and in walked a very pleasant looking gentleman and all he wanted was a shave. And so the barber knew what he needed to do, but then all of a sudden, he was nervous. 
His hands shook a little bit as he draped the sheet over the man. And as he put shaving cream on the man's face, he tried to remember this presentation and, and how it started, this thing that he had memorized. And for the life of him, he, he couldn't remember all of his copious notes and the things that he had, he had, uh, he had studied for so long. And beads of sweat popped, across, popped out across his forehead as, as he stropped that razor. And, and, and at last, he, 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 he nervously pointed the, the blade at the man in the chair and, and shaking he said, are you prepared to die? <laughs> I think the guy probably prayed through right there. I think it was probably a pretty effective, effective thing. I, I don't know. But evangelism, I don't know. Is that the way we should be sharing our faith? I mean... Some people even ask, is it even right to evangelize, to convince people to, uh, to follow our own faith? Maybe we should just be minding our own business. Re recently, a, a Barna research study found that over 94% of practicing Christians in America believe that part of their faith means being a witness about Jesus. And they also believe that, that the best thing that could ever happen to someone would be for them to know Jesus. But over half of people studied under the age of 45 uh, aren't necessarily sure whether it's even right to evangelize. 47% of them agree at least somewhat that it is wrong to share one's personal beliefs with someone of a different faith in hopes that they will one day share the same faith. If you couple those findings with the fact that only about 5% of Christians, uh, in, in, uh, as, as we take the, the studies and the surveys and things, 5% uh, of Christians uh, probably have the gift of evangelism. Uh, you know, you put all that together, maybe we're off the hook. Maybe we don't need to, don't need to mess with this. Maybe it's just kind of something from back there. Except, except there's this great commission thing, right? Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28. Uh, Jesus in Luke 10 uh, prayed for workers to go into the harvest fields of the world. Uh, in Matthew 5 he said that you and I are to be the salt and the light of the world. Uh, bringing his flavor and his light into the world where we go. He said that the Holy Spirit uh, would, would empower us to be his witnesses in Acts 1.8. The Apostle Peter said that we all need to be ready to share the reason for the hope that we have. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 said that we are Jesus' ambassadors representing him to the world. Over and over and over again we can't get away from the call, from the challenge, from the mission of the church to reach out to those who are far from God so that they can experience his love in their their lives in a phrase we live to love people to life God wants to use you exactly how he's made you to bring people closer to him it's your mission should you choose to accept it but, but it has to be, right? It has to be different than memorizing a presentation or, or handing out some, some uh, tracks somewhere. I, how do we do this well? I, I love the work of, of Pastor Kevin Harney uh, who, uh, who, who describes uh, the best evangelism as organic outreach. And maybe you've read one or more of these books. We've used them here in different, uh, different places and, and uh, uh, different settings and, and studies and things. Organic outreach for ordinary people. Organic outreach for churches, for families. Uh, if you haven't read one of these, I'd strongly encourage you to look it up. I'm sure you can get it in the digital version. And you could probably have it downloaded within the next three minutes if you want to. If the Wi-Fi is working, right? So, uh, but uh, the great, great uh, resources. And love for you to, uh, to dig deep on this. And, and uh, um, uh, today... I'll I'll just, just uh, refer to it a little bit, but these are some great resources for you. Organic. I mean, that's a, that's a big buzzword today. Usually, uh, we're talking about food, right? When we talk about thing, something being organic, we need to eat organic. I mean, it's the stuff that, that hasn't been exposed to the unnatural elements and toxins and, and different things. I mean, it's, it's healthier, right? Um, it's more expensive, right? I mean, uh, you'd think they're not adding things to it. It, it would be less expensive, right? But, but it, it says, ends up being a lot more uh, organic. But the word organic just means that it's natural, right? So if we're using this term, uh, when, we, when it comes to reaching out to people who are far from God, we're simply saying that we need to do that naturally. 
The, the most effective way to reach anyone with the good news of God's love is when it naturally flows out of our lives. And it should naturally be flowing out of our lives if we love God with all of our heart. And if we're, we're following him and doing what he wants us to do, naturally that will, that will spring out of our lives. I mean, we do this all the time with, in a lot of areas of life. Um, if you eat at a great restaurant... Pretty soon, uh, it's going to come up in conversation, right? I, I ate at this great place the other night. Or, or you, uh, you, you talk about the, the atmosphere and the service and what you ordered and what other people ordered and the great experience. You probably post about it. Um, we, in our family, we can't go anywhere without it being uh, on Nick's uh, Facebook and Instagram within a few minutes, right? Um, and so, uh, so uh, Nick has become uh, an evangelist for the Medina football games or for the restaurants that we go to or the places that we we've in a sense we 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 become an evangelist for these places that we like because we're sharing naturally it just comes up we should, hey I went to this great place the other, oh it was good you should you should go sometime maybe even take somebody with you the next time or maybe you I don't know you get a good deal on a on a washer and dryer or or you find a dentist that can give shots that they don't hurt uh, you find that guy let me know no I think I found that guy actually and I'll tell you more about him uh, uh, if you want but uh, it, maybe you discover a counselor who who really listens and understands and you connect with and, and I mean you don't keep that stuff to yourself you you're naturally excited about it and so so it just comes up naturally in the the conversations and in in the relationships that you have uh, with the people that you're that you're close to. That's organic outreach. Naturally telling those around us what we're excited about. See, if, if the gospel really is good news, if we, have, if we have found the secret to eternal life, if we know what it means to enjoy a relationship with Jesus, if we've discovered a life of joy and peace in the midst of the chaos of this world, doesn't it make sense that we'd be sharing that with the people around us? Uh, God has given all of us a mission that's essential and it's not impossible. It's not an impossible uh, uh, mission. In fact, it should simply be a natural part of our lives as we follow him. And really, it all just boils down to, to love. Because God loved the world uh, so much that he sent Jesus to die for our sins, to overcome death. He pro has provided salvation and redemption, paving the way for our relationship uh, with, with God himself for all eternity. Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Love is at the root ...of the entire gospel message. Without God's love, there, there wouldn't be a message. And because love is at the root of, all, of it all... ...love has to be the root at, uh, at the root of our efforts... To, uh, to, ...to fulfill God's mission through us. If it's true that you live to love people to life... ...then your life will be characterized by love. In a, in a few areas. And I think these are important as we think about this mission... ...that God has given us. First of all, we need to love God. It starts there. We've got to have that relationship with him first. If you don't have a passionate love for God, you won't care about his mission to go and make disciples. But if you're living a life in love with Jesus, it's going to naturally spill over. Jesus said this is the most important thing to do as a follower of his. Matthew 22, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So if, if you're feeling like, oh, outreach, oh, pastor's talking about evangelism again. Oh, I guess I'll, you know, scroll, I'll do something. I, I, don't, I don't really have it. If, if you're feeling like uh, you have a lack of, of uh, passion for outreach and evangelism, maybe this is the first place you need to evaluate in your life. Are, are you truly in love with Jesus? Maybe you've drifted away over time. Or, or maybe uh, faith for you is just about uh, religious activity and it hasn't really been about a relationship with God. Religious activity doesn't really motivate us to reach out to other people. It's just something that we do. I mean, it's kind of an obligation. Uh, sometimes we kind of resent that. Oh, I got to go, got to go to church, right? You just think about how you talk about uh, some of that. Got to go read my Bible. Uh, no, you don't get to. You, or you don't have to. You get to, right? An obligation is not a good motivator. <laughs> Love is an extremely positive motivator. This is just like when we find a product or service that we love. I mean, we share it. If we don't love it, we don't share it. 
Or maybe we give negative reviews, right? Maybe, maybe that's been you in the past, giving negative reviews about Christianity or the church. If, if you're not wildly in love with Jesus and your life with him, you probably won't be sharing that with anybody anytime soon. In Revelation 2... ...we find a letter that Jesus wrote to the, uh, the church in Ephesus. They were doing some, some good things and, and Jesus highlighted those things... ...but then he said, I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. You, you won't be motivated to share your faith if your love for God has grown cold. So we have to get that right first. If, if that's you, cultivate your relationship with God. Before you step out in mission for him, we've got to have that relationship uh, up and running and, and uh, uh, hitting, on, hitting on all cylinders. Spend time with God. Pray, read the Bible, go to church, worship, talk to Christian friends, and get quiet with him. Think about uh, deeply about God's love for you. Make your spiritual life a priority. Let Jesus resuscitate your love, your heart. For him, that's got to be first. If it, it, it's not just uh, go do this and memorize this and say these words, it starts with a genuine, deep relationship with God. Love God. The next, the next step, I think, is is uh, maybe not what you're expecting, but that is to love the church. In order to have a, a mission for God out there somewhere with other people, we first have to love God with all of our hearts, and we have to love the church. Again, we're not talking about a building or an organization. We already talked about that in this series. The, the church isn't the building. The church is the people, right? It's, it's us. Uh, and we need to love each other. And Jesus said that loving each other would help point people to him. John 13, 34 and 35, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. People will know and be drawn to Jesus if we love each other in the body of Christ in the church. And, it, and it's not just a little bit of love. Jesus describes what this love needs to be like. And Jesus didn't say, love one another like you love your dog. Although some of you probably, I mean, that might be, might be a good place to start. I don't know. Or, or love one another like you love your mother-in-law. Not, not, it's not what he said. Love one another like you love hummus. No, it's not what he, it's, we're not talking, it's, it's a different kind of, he didn't tell us to just put up with one another or to not kill each other. Now we should put up with one, one another and we, we shouldn't kill each other. Those are, those, are, those are true statements. But he told us to love one another, the church, the body of Christ, uh, the partners, our partners in faith. We need to love each other like he loves us. Our love for the church should mimic Jesus' love for us. Well, what does, what does that look like? Well, Paul described it in 1 Corinthians 13, and it seems pretty extreme. He says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Writing about this verse, Tom Rayner says, the principles of these two verses alone are sufficient to cause a revival in most churches. We are not to love fellow church members because they are lovable. We are to love the unlovable as well. We are not to pray for and encourage our pastors just when they are doing things we like. We are to pray for and encourage them when they do things we don't like. Church membership is founded on authentic, biblical, unconditional love. If we're, if we're loving each other within the church, the body of Christ, like that... People will notice. They'll see that there's something different about, about us, about the followers of Jesus. And, and, and there's something attractive about that. If, if you find that, that your love for, for God's people is waning, uh, there are a few things you can do. Not an exhaustive list, but maybe, maybe we could camp out on the first one. Pray more, criticize less. Uh, seek out people who, who, uh, uh, and, and who maybe you differ with and, uh, and work out those differences. Don't just ignore them and just let it float. Deal with those things. Focus on, on what you hold in common, on the essentials of the faith. I, I know a good sermon series to direct you to. Ask for forgiveness. 
and grant forgiveness. We, we need to love each other like Jesus loves us. We have to get this right. Eternity is at stake for people who are far from God. They will be drawn to God when they see our love for each other. We need to love God. Before we ever try to reach out uh, to, uh, to, to anybody, we need to make sure that our, our love for God is, is, is deep and strong. We need to love each other because others are drawn to, uh, to God uh, because of our relationship with each other, because of the church. And then we need to love people, people who are far from God. I, now, I didn't say judge people. I didn't say make sure that people are living right. Dog on it. I didn't say... Look at the people around you and shake your head and wonder what this world is coming to. I didn't say alienate people by spouting off your amazing political opinions no matter how right you might be. I didn't even say convert people. I said love people. Especially people who are far from God. I think evangelism gets a bad reputation sometimes because people are treated like projects, right? Uh, uh, intended or not, if my primary motivation uh, to know you is so that you'll uh, acknowledge my faith or start believing in my faith, then th there's something disingenuous. Right? Kind of like the, uh, the car salesman kind of thing, right? I'm only uh, buddying up to you so that I can get something from you, so that you can buy what I'm selling, right? I mean, that's, uh, if we do that in the church, it's just kind of the worst pyramid scheme in the world, right? But, but if I'm building relationships with people based on love for them, the entire motivation has changed. And, and so as that relationship develops, if I love God with all my heart and I'm, and I'm loving out my relationship with, uh, living out my relationship of love with the people in the church, uh, and then I'm de I've developed a relationship with someone who's far from God, uh, it's going to be natural that those, those uh, relationships that are most important in my life are going are to spring out. And, and organic opportunities will arise where I can share my faith and my love for God. One of the questions that uh, we want you to be asking yourself uh, regularly is, am I close to someone far from God? Right? It's, uh, we've given out those cards. There's probably a couple more on the back table there. The uh, questions to live by. And the last one on that list is, am I close to someone far from from God. Uh, and now some of you might have tons of people in your life in your sphere of influence who are, who are far from God. Others of us might have to be a little more intentional to seek out those relationships. Uh, the point is that, that part of living life with God is letting his love bubble up organically in our relationships. So we need to have relationships with people who can benefit from that love for God and be drawn to him. With people who need God's love. So maybe you're, you know, on fire for God and you're following him and pursuing him each day and, and your love for God is where it needs to be and your love for the church is, is great and you've got great, great relationships uh, with fellow believers but, but this whole love for people who are far from God, maybe you're lacking. What, what are some things we can, we can do? Well, the first thing I think is that we need to pray but not just pray for them. We need to pray for us. We need to pray that our heart will beat uh, for other people like God's heart does. That, that God will give us a heart like his that, that, that beats for, that feels for, that reaches out to lost and broken people. We can also pray specifically for, for one or two or five or however many people God lays on your heart. These specific people and, and these relationships. And God, how do you want me to, to, to dig into that relationship and, and how do you want to use me there? I think a great step is to study the life of Jesus and look at how he related to people who are far from him. It may be a little different than what you might think. He drew up alongside and built, uh, built real relationships. I, I think a big thing is just to notice people. To, uh, to not just uh, smooth through life with, uh, with all the relationships that, uh, that I've got and, uh, and, and moving on and, and, uh, and not really noticing what's going on because I've got all my stuff going, right? Notice and then connect with. People. One thing uh, that I think is important here is that relationships are, are usually and should be uh, long term. This, this mission that Jesus has given us is to make disciples. 
right? A, a, a disciple is a follower of Jesus. And, and so making a disciple is, a, is not just a simple little boom, boom transaction and we're done, but it's a long-term investment over time in, in relationship. It, it might mean that, that you don't ever uh, see the person make a decision to follow, but you've been part of the process that God is preparing their hearts to bring them closer to that time. But it, it's taken time, days, months, weeks, years, to get them down the road further. And then later on, maybe someone else comes into their life. And, but it's a long-term investment. It, it might mean that, that, that after that person does uh, commit themselves to following Jesus, it's not just, okay, done, moving on to somewhere else. But now I'm, I'm part of helping them to not just pray a prayer, but to, to live a life, right? To be a disciple, a follower of Jesus. And so that relationship continues and grows. The Great Commission starts with, uh, with that little word that I think, I think we maybe, I don't know, two extremes. We either overemphasize it or we gloss over it. It's the word go, right? And, and in overemphasizing it, maybe we see, oh, go. Well, that's for all those missionary types out there. Uh, and they're going to really go. They're going to like head to Africa or Vietnam or Russia. or so, They're going to go. They're going overseas. They're going to South America. They're, they're, they're going away from here, far away. And uh, Jesus wants them to go. And I'll pray for them. And that's great. And we do. We should, we should be supporting the missionaries who go far away. Uh, but in doing that, I think there's a... There, whether whether intentionally or not, we, we feel like we're off the hook because the missionaries are the ones going, right? Or, or the other side is we just kind of gloss over it, go and make this side. Okay, well, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, so we're, we're just going to plan a bunch of church stuff and, and we hope that people show up to it. We're, we're, we'll make disciples of the people who end up inside our, our church doors. But I have to ask, is it really going ...if we're just waiting for people to come. I, I know, I mean, inviting people to things... ...we need to have things happening and all the, ...but there's, there's an essential element of going... ...in order to bring people to, uh, to learn what it means to be a disciple. Somewhere along the way, I think churches have stopped going... ...a lot of the time. What, do, what does it mean to go? Maybe this is... Maybe it's revealing how simple uh, my mind works, but going means, first of all, not staying. I know, your minds are blown. Going means not staying. Churches tend to gather saints, and, and that's fine. But, but I'd much rather our church be a launching pad instead of just a gathering place. Right? We, we don't want to just provide a place for Christians to huddle up, but a place where you are equipped and resourced and then launched into the world to fulfill the mission to love people to life that God has brought into your life. And you can do that a whole lot better out there in the world where you live, organically, naturally, uh, wh whatever we're doing as we go from this place. It's not just a huddle up and gather kind of place. We're not just going to stay. Going means not staying. Going means launching. Going also means empathy. Put yourself in the shoes of the people that God brings into your life. Try to identify with them. Uh, ask him to help you see life through their perspective. Uh, uh, because I think if, if we're in the church very long, we start to have certain blinders on and ways of looking at the world and we can lack empathy at times. We need to see people the way Jesus sees them. And draw up alongside them right where they are. And help them as he guides. Help them know what it means to love Jesus. Empathy. Going also means leaving what's comfortable. Ethan Hunt in the Mission Impossible movies didn't stay comfortable. He jumped out of planes. I mean like Tom Cruise really jumped out of planes, right? Uh, he, he hung from ceilings upside down. And the sweat drop and the, is it gonna, and you're all, you're on the edge of your seat. And, um, I mean, he rode motorcycles with very high rates of speed. I mean, it was not a comfortable, peaceful existence to be Ethan Hunt in the Mission Impossible movies. He's probably not calling you, unless you want to, I guess. He's not, probably not calling you to ride a motorcycle at a high rate of speed. A couple of you, maybe. I, I, go ahead, go for it. Don't invite me. 
Jesus is not calling us to be comfortable. He's calling us to go. And being on a mission doesn't mean that I'm going to stay where it's comfortable, but I'm going to go out where it's not comfortable. I'm going to go to the edge of that comfort and, and go beyond it and allow him to use me in the areas that, that, uh, that aren't necessarily the, the comfortable place to be. And then I think going also means choosing to make the effort. This is something that happens uh, when, when we make the effort. There's intention involved, right? I'm, I'm intending to do this. It's not just something that's just going to happen without me, without me putting in some effort. It happens as we're actively pursuing Jesus with all of our heart, soul, and mind. It happens as we're loving the people around us that God has, has, has put uh, in our path, both within the church and then those who aren't yet in the church. And in doing that, we're choosing to accept the mission that he's given us. As Elton Trueblood once wrote, evangelism is not a professional job for a few trained men, but is instead the unrelenting responsibility of every person who belongs to the company of Jesus. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to love God with all your heart. To love the church, the body of Christ, Jesus' body. And to love people who are far from God. How do we say that around, there, around here? We live to love people to life. It's essential to your faith. Our, uh, our worship team is going to come and, and lead us in a song. And, and um, maybe you find yourself in, in uh, various aspects. Maybe you're, you're on fire for God and he is bringing people to, to faith through your life. And, and that's great. Or maybe, maybe your love for him has, has waned a little bit. And you need to focus in on what he wants for your your relationship with him. Or, or maybe there's, there's some strained relationships within, between you and, and others in the body of Christ. Uh, uh, essential that you deal with that. Or maybe, maybe you need to intentionally be praying about who it is that God would have you to be reaching out to. Will you stand with me? Let's, uh, let's pray together and then we'll, we'll sing. Father God, we again offer ourselves to you. You've called us to, uh, to a mission kind of seems overwhelming that the God of the universe would, would need or want to use us. And yet that's exactly what you desire. And so, Lord, we pray that you would speak to us, that you'll challenge us, that you'll raise us to new heights with you, that you'll help us to, to step out of the, the comfortable life that maybe we're living into the mission that you are calling us to. We, we want to, it's my prayer that all of us would accept, would choose to accept the mission that you have for us, to love the people in our life and introduce them to life with you. We offer ourselves to you today in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 
sing with me all my life. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath, with every breath that I am. of God all my life all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath every breath that I am able I'll tell it, I'll sing it I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. Here is where I lay it down. Here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Sing that again. Here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing now. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Lord God, we offer our lives to you. We're excited about the mission that you have for us. Maybe even this afternoon, this week. Lord, I pray that you will take us to the places and the people that you desire us to go to. That we can say the things that you uh, guide us to say. That we can do the things that, that you guide us to do. That we can serve in ways as you lead us. And Lord, I pray that you will make a difference as only you can. Not only in our lives, but through our lives in the places where you take us. Lord, we want it to be true of us that we live to love people to life. Make it so. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.